We report to the floor. Next is Judge Sarah Netburn to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Does anyone seek recognition to speak? Senator Lee, uh, Senator Cruz has asked for recognition. Is it, would you mind if I go first with him? Yes, yeah, fine. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have deep concerns about Judge Sarah Netburn's nomination and specifically about her radical rulings that endanger women by placing biological men in women's prisons. And given the avalanche of letters this committee has received from women's groups and female inmates, I'm not the only person with concerns. In the case of JJS versus W.S. Plyler, the prisoner dubbed J July Justine Shelby, his real name is William McLean, was a serial rapist. There's no other way to say it. He was also a six foot two, fully intact biological man. His past criminal offenses included child molestation of a nine-year-old boy, rape of a 17-year-old girl, and criminal deviant conduct. No fa factual details are in the record, but the state defined the offense as, quote, compelling with force or the threat of force sexual conduct. As a result of these offenses, Shelby was incarcerated for 18 years. One year after being released on parole, Shelby broke parole by circulating violent child pornography. And so back in prison, and at 51 years of age, Shelby decided that he was a woman. And as a self-declared woman, he demanded to be jailed with biological woman. And failing to lock him up with other women, he argued, was a violation of the Eighth Amendment. Now, luckily for Shelby, his lawsuit ended up in front of Judge Netburn. Putting political ideology over justice and reality, Magistrate Judge Netburn recommended that Shelby, quote, be transferred immediately to a woman's facility. Despite a lifelong pattern of rape, sexual assault, and obvious sexually predator, predatory instincts, Magistrate Judge Netburn's opinion declared that, quote, there are no signs that petitioner is at risk of reoffending. That defies words. Magistrate Judge Netburn doubled down on her commitment to a radical political ideology in her opinion. Casting aside any concerns for the female prisoners, Judge Netburn wrote, the BOP also posits that permitting petitioner to live among women will be traumatizing and possibly dangerous to them. This concern is overblown. Those are her words. Netburn's opinion went on, quote, the BOP's repeated refusal to transfer petitioner to a woman's facility to further her gender transition, despite knowing the condition of petitioner's physical and mental health, violates the petitioner's Eighth Amendment rights. This judge is ruling the Constitution requires that biological men who wake up one day and say I'm a woman have to be housed with female prisoners. This judge also ruled in effect that female prisoners have no rights. The Democrats on this committee like to say they support the rights of women. But we're about to find out whether they do or not. Because in this case, you're taking a six foot two man who is a serial rapist, and this judge sent that man to Fort Worth, Texas. I asked that judge, do the women in that prison have any right? If it was your mother, if it was your daughter, if it was your wife, how would you feel if your daughter was housed with a six foot two man who's a serial rapist? Because political ideology matters more than sanity. And by the way, the threat that this ideologue said is overblown is happening all over the country. For example, in Judge Netburn's home state of New York in 2024, a former prisoner at Rikers Island claimed that she was groped and raped by a male inmate posing as a transgender woman. There had also been a prior right, right, rape attempt at Rikers in 2021 by another transgender inmate against a biological female inmate. In New Jersey, in 2022, a transgender inmate impregnated not one, but two female inmates. 
In California, a woman's group sued the Department of Corrections after transgender prisoner raped two women, impregnating one of them. And in the chairman's home state of Illinois, a female inmate sued the Department of Corrections after she was raped by a transgender inmate. This is happening over and over and over again, and it's because of ideology being put ahead of common sense. At her hearing, I asked Judge Netburn, do you regret your decision transferring a serial rapist, a biological man, to a woman's prison? Her answer was, quote, no. I faithfully applied the law to the facts. That is not the law, and these are not the facts. As I mentioned at the outset, this committee has received letters from female prisoners horrified at the prospect of being housed with a biological male, fearing quite reasonably for their safety. Interestingly, the chairman has not read to you the letters those female inmates have sent to this committee pleading on this committee to use some common sense. I'm going to read a couple for you. Alyssa Kay, a current inmate, here's what she wrote to us, quote, people are already getting raped and nobody cares. Honestly, someone in here is going to end up getting killed. Having men here in prison with us disrupts any sense of rehabilitation. We fear for our safety. We have further loss of privacy as we are forced to share intimate spaces with a man. We watch some, as some prisons are victims of abuse and others willingly engage in sexual acts in our shared space. This isn't right. This isn't fair. Do any of our Democratic members care about Alyssa Kay's concerns? How about Amy I, a former inmate? Here's what she wrote to us to say, quote, I urge the committee to watch my story and the story of other female prisoners and a brave, resigned lieutenant who spoke out against this anti-woman policy. Women, including incarcerated women, just because a woman is in a prison doesn't mean she loses her rights. That's me talking, not the letter. I'll get back to the letter. Women, including incarcerated women, shouldn't be erased as a matter of law to accommodate the interest of men. One person's rights cannot come at the cost of another's. Here's another letter, Evelyn V., a former inmate. She wrote to us and said, quote, as a former inmate in the California state prison system, I share your concern about how women's rights are being pushed aside compared to the interest of men who are self-identifying as women and gaining entry to facilities meant for women. Now, at the hearing, Judge Netburn told us again she thinks concerns of the risk of Shelby engaging in sexual reoffense are, quote, overblown. I strongly disagree, and as it happens, we now have facts. Just yesterday, yesterday, exquisite timing, by the way, on this markup, yesterday, the Washington Free Beacon reported that Shelby, who is housed at FMC Carswell in Fort Worth, Texas, was placed in administrative segregation for exposing himself to female prisoners, apparently joking that he was fully intact. Congratulations, Judge Netburn. That's what you're doing to the women in this prison. You're subjecting them to victimization and assault. If a guy on the subway did this, whipping out his genitalia to you on the subway, you'd deck the guy and arrest him for indecent exposure. But this radical says he's got a constitutional right to be there and do this. I have to say, this is an issue everyone on this committee knows this isn't right. Every one of us. Every one of us would be horrified if a loved one found out she was the cellmate of a six-foot-two man who was a serial rapist. But in today's topsy-turvy political world, the way you get nominated to be a judge is you demonstrate you're a radical. I, I know people must be saying, well, gosh, New York has 20 million people. They couldn't find one person qualified to be a judge to give a lifetime appointment to, and that's the point. They, th what they're looking for is show us you're a radical. Well, 
This is an opportunity for every senator to demonstrate whether you'll stand up for the rights of women or not. I sadly expect a party line vote on this, but I will say this, if we have a party line vote, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna make a request. I'm gonna request, Mr. Chairman, that you ask Majority Leader Schumer to expedite a floor, floor vote on this judge on the floor. I want to see Senator Tester vote on whether a six foot two man should go to a women's prison. I want to see Senator Brown. I want to see every Democrat go on record. Do you give a damn about the women in your state or not? It's a simple choice, and it's a choice that will be defined by the word yes or the word no. Senator Lee. <clears throat> According to that same article in the Free Beacon, um, this inmate um, pulled this member from his pants and was flaunting it, uh, uh, wagging it, his female inmates. Uh, that is not the behavior of a female inmate. Uh, that is the behavior of, of a dangerous criminal, especially when you understand that this guy is a serial rapist who had raped, uh, raped people and committed sexual assaults and engaged in all kinds of violent criminal behavior over a period of decades. He'd spent a little bit of time out of prison, but he'd get out of prison, he'd reoffend again. Now, many female inmates, that's uh, uh, widely understood, many female inmates have themselves been the victims of sexual assault, rape, and other acts of violence long before they became incarcerated. Just imagine, just imagine the trauma that they have to endure merely by having to share prison facilities with a male prisoner before he even goes and does something like that, before he goes out and starts engaging in exhibitionist lewd acts. This is not fair to them. And the judgment reflected by this magistrate judge who we're now considering for a lifetime appointment to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. This is not fair to the inmates. This is itself its own Eighth Amendment violation. And I couldn't disagree more with Judge Nett Burns' conclusion that it would have violated the Eighth Amendment not to send this male prisoner to a female prison. Now, this is uh, lest we get caught in thinking that this is just a mere partisan divide, this is just Republicans and Democrats disagreeing, only in Washington could that pass for plausible analysis. Anywhere else, this is madness. This is nuts. This is insanity. This is the sort of thing that happens in a free society as it's going into an ugly, ugly tailspin of sorts. Now, we can pull out of this. But we must, because this is a threat to public safety and law and order and all that is decent in society. Now, don't just take my word for it. Let's hear what some former inmates, uh, uh, some of whom participated in, in uh, the Independent Women's Forum's documentary on men in women's prisons. Um, who wrote to this committee, let's hear what they had to say. And just to be clear, the, the Independent Women's Forum is hardly a, a conservative or, or even a moderate organization. Now this one's from Amy Ichikawa, a former inmate uh, uh, from California. Quote, I urge the committee to watch my story and the story of other female prisoners. And a brave, resigned lieutenant who spoke out against this anti-woman policy. Women, including incarcerated women, shouldn't be erased as a matter of law to accommodate the interests of men. One person's rights cannot come at the cost of another, close quote. Indeed, I, in fact, our, our, our system is, is set up so as to find ways to not step on somebody else's rights just so the purported right of, uh, of one person, in this case, this particular inmate, a serial rapist, can have his preference. Then uh, let's hear from Alyssa Kamholtz. She's a, a current prisoner in the California state prison system. 
Quote, most incarcerated women like myself have already experienced sexual trauma and violence during our lives. We're trying to heal and prepare to be productive citizens after serving out our sentences. Having men here in prison with us disrupts any sense of rehabilitation. We fear for our safety. We have further loss of privacy as we are forced to share intimate spaces with a man. We watch as some prisoners are victims of abuse and others willingly engage in sexual acts in our shared space. This isn't right. This isn't fair. And so as she describes it, even before, even in circumstances where the male inmate isn't engaging in one or more acts of sexual assault or something like that, it's, it's, it's still traumatizing to them even before that happens. Imagine how she'd feel, how she would have felt if she had to experience, witness, what this prisoner did to his female co-inmates. Next, uh, let's hear from Evelyn Valiente, former California State Prison System inmate. Quote, as a former inmate in the California State Prison System, I share your concern about how women's rights are being pushed aside compared to the interests of men who are self-identifying as women and gaining entry to facilities meant for women. Then uh, members of the Women's Liberation Front, known as WOLF, uh, uh, the uh, left, of, left of center feminist group, uh, have written over 82 emails to this committee opposing Judge Net Burns' nomination. Here are a few excerpts, excerpts from those emails. Quote, I oppose the confirmation of Judge Net Burn because women have human rights to safe spaces and men do not belong in women's prisons. During the hearing, it became apparent that Judge Netburn holds an ideology that I believe is detrimental to the rights and well-being of women and girls. I firmly believe that it is essential to uphold hold the principles of fairness and justice, and I'm concerned that Judge Netburn's perspective may hinder the progress towards these goals. Women have the right to safe spaces, and men do not belong in women's prisons. Please, please stand up for women. I urge my colleagues, uh, with all the urgency I'm capable of communicating, to please stand up for women by opposing Judge Nett Burns' nomination to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Anyone else seek recognition to speak at this moment? Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to enter a couple of things in the record. Certainly. Uh, I would ask unanimous consent to enter into the record the Free Beacon article that I referenced that describes the offense that this prisoner just committed in the Free Beacon article came out yesterday. Without objection. I would also ask unanimous consent to enter into the record. These are the letters from women, prisoners, and former prisoners that they're written to this committee. And I, I would ask, I'd venture to say there's not a Democrat senator on this committee who's read these letters. I'm going to enter them into the record, but I'm also going to ask my colleagues to read these letters and understand the people who who this vote is hurting. So I ask unanimous consent to enter these letters in the record. Without objection. And finally, I have a letter here from several 9-11 families, uh, including one uh, in Katy, Texas, who sent a letter complaining about how Judge Netburn handled a case involving 9-11 families, the final paragraph of which reads, we are heartbroken that the court issued no decision on motions by hundreds of 9-11 victims and family members and did not even answer our request for any sort of attention to our unopposed filings. We cannot understand how a magistrate judge would treat 9-11 family members so callously or so blithely disregard her duties, and we wanted to bring it to the committee's attention. So I ask unanimous consent that this letter from 9-11 families also be entered in the record. Without objection. Thank you. Let me conclude then by saying the following. Senator Graham sent questions for the record to Judge Sarah Netburn, and, and she responded to a question directly on this case. I want to read her response. Before I do, I want to make it clear this has not been mentioned and should have been. She was a magistrate at the time. Magistrates perform an important function in our court system, but is limited. It's not the same authority as a district court judge, and that's relevant to their response. The question asked by Senator Graham on behalf of his side is, do you stand by this decision, the JJS versus W.L. Plyler decision today? Her response, yes, I faithfully applied the law to the facts in reaching my recommendation. 
The district judge adopted my report and recommendation and concluded that it was, quote, thorough, detailed, and well-reasoned. I issued only a recommendation pursuant to my authority, pursuant to my authority under 28 U.S.C. 636B. I did not order the Bureau of Prisons to do anything. The district judge ordered the Bureau of Prisons to transfer the petitioner to a female facility. The Bureau of Prisons did not move or for a stay or otherwise challenge the district judge's order. In the approximately 18 months since the district judge ordered the Bureau of Prisons to transfer the petitioner to a female facility, I have received regular status letters, none of which reports any disciplinary or safety issues. The Bureau of Prison is in negotiations with the petitioner to voluntarily settle any remaining claims. The point in reading that response in its entirety is that as a magistrate, she did not have the authority to order this man into the Bureau of Prisons or out of the Bureau of Prisons. That authority resided in the district court judge. I ask unanimous consent without objection to enter that judge's decision, Judge Vernon Broderick, into the record without, without objection. The question is, Judge... Mr. Chairman, it just, I, I don't want to belabor it, but if I may, <clears throat> the point of this whole exercise is that she was on the front lines of this fight. She set in motion what we have today. She had every opportunity to do what Senator Cruz and Senator Lee suggested, just apply some basic common sense here. Listen to the Bureau of Prisons' concern. She made findings and recommend, recommendations to the district judge. I promise you, if the district judge is ever nominated for anything, good luck on this committee with us. So you get no pass, you get no, it's not my problem from our point of view. You had a chance to stop a bad thing and it's about your judgment. And I can just tell you right now, I believe what Senator Cruz and Lee and others have said is gonna be widely accepted on the floor. I too challenge Senator Schumer. I'm gonna vote for one of your nominees in a minute. I voted for almost all of them out of a respect for the senators to pick people in their state, but there's a limit to anything. This is wrong. This is dangerous. And what we're saying today to all these prisoners who wrote, we don't care. You got a chance to reset this case. You have a chance to make sure people after her do not do the same thing. If there's no consequence for this, then you're gonna get more of it. So this is a chance for the committee to reset, and I would imagine most Americans sitting in our seats today would have no problem with saying no to her. Thank you. The question is on the nomination of Judge Sarah Netburn to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Ms. Klobuchar. Aye. Mr. Coons. Aye. Mr. Blumenthal. Aye. 